Here's another example of a chi-square. This one is where um, Professor Dam asked uh, the gender that students associate with and then also what activity <clears throat> they chose to do during spring break. So I'll go into frequency and click on binomial. And the first thing I want to know is, do I have an equal number of people who associate, uh, who identify as male and female? So I'm going to put that in this box here. I'm going to leave this 50-50 because we had just said women and men. And so what I can see is because this p-value is not less than 0.05, I have roughly the same number of people who identify as a man and the same number of people who identify as a woman. So now let's do the same thing for our activities. So I'm going to click on binomial test and I'm going to move activity over here. Now notice that I have th um, three activity choices here. Did they choose to sleep during spring break, read during spring break, or travel during spring break? So that's three options. Since those are three options, I want to see if they're tested equally. So that would mean I want to test them all against a 33% um, likelihood, right? So I take the 100% divided by three and it's 33.333. So it's gonna be a test value of 33%. So testing it, leaving it at 0.5 would not have worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. <clears throat> and so now I can see that um, there are significant differences here. So there were 23 uh, people who slept, two people who read, and 11 people who traveled. And so that means that roughly 64% of people chose to sleep. 64% is significantly different from the predicted value of 33%. And so we can see that p-value is less than 0.05 here. And then um, two people chose to read, which ends up being about 5.6%. 5.6% is much less than the predicted value of 33%, so we can see this p-value is less than 0.05. And then 11 people chose to travel, that's roughly 30.6%. 30.6% is not that different from the predicted value of 33%, and so that's why this p-value is 0 0.860. So in other words, we can say people were more likely to choose to sleep during spring break and less likely to choose to read during spring break. Now we can do the test for independence to see how gender and uh, activity choice predicted one another. So I'm gonna scroll down, oops, I'm in the wrong one. Frequencies, I'm gonna scroll down to contingency tables. Now I think uh, my independent variable here would be gender. And then my dependent variable is activity. And so here are my basic counts. I can see that it is a significant relationship. The chi-square is 8.106. My degrees of freedom of, is two, which makes sense because I have three conditions here. Three minus one is two. And then um, my p-value is less than 0.05, so it's 0.017. So now I have to make sense of what's happened here. I might be able to eyeball it. It looks like those who identify as a man had higher numbers of sleeping Whereas those who identified as a woman, it looks like sleeping and travel was the same, but were less likely to read. So here might be how I want to look at it. Perhaps that did make sense. So maybe I want to look at the um, percentages. So I'm going to scroll down and click row. And so here we can see it's 87% of men chose to sleep. And then they have <clears throat> reading and travel at 6.3%, where we see roughly women halfway uh, with um, sleeping and traveling. Another way to think about it is if this doesn't make sense to you looking at it this way, we could switch um, the order in our contingency table. So you could start with activity and then put gender in the column. So when I put it this way, notice my p-value stays the same, and that's because we're relating the two variables, but I'm just visualizing it differently. So what we could see is for sleeping, we see sleeping is popular among men and women. Reading is not popular for both men and women, but travel was more popular for women than it was for men. So visualizing it this way may have helped us see it a little bit better. Um, and then again, you can also put in the expected values or make a plot as we've done in previous examples. So what I would say for my questions, if I scroll up to the top, is that there's sampling, there's equal sampling of men and women in the study. It looks as though people prefer 
are more likely to sleep during spring break and are least likely to read during spring break. And then when we look at the gender differences, it looks like men and women both choose to sleep. However, men, women are more likely to choose to travel than men during spring break. So with our chi-square, we have our test for independence and our goodness of fit to try to answer all these kinds of questions. We're very limited in our ability to make concrete um, predictions like we are with regression and correlation because we don't have the variability in the data for that. However, we still can use the counts of the different conditions to make um, some conclusions.